What's up, everybody? Circus here coming at you with a special edition of the show today. We're going to be doing a KC Cup interview with our boy Negative One. He played in the September 2020 KC Cup that just happened over the weekend. And he got second place in the whole damn thing. And I think that's pretty damn good. How you doing, Neg? I'm doing all right, you know. Like, Could have been a little better, but... Yeah, this is what I'm saying. This guy finishes second place, and he says, I could have done a little bit better. And in case you people are like, Circus, who is this scrub? Do you have any proof? And we do have proof. Here it is on the screen. 97,195 dual points. 553 duels. 324 victories. 58.58% win rate that's actually pretty good when you get to that level or that many games played and seven consecutive victories that's the way to end right there man yeah so uh i can get into like why there are so many duels played but like yeah, a we'll, little later but yeah we'll get to that so um for us we're in the same time zone so basically the 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 cup starts at like thursday night going into friday at midnight yeah. Do, do you stay up and start playing right at midnight or do you wait till the next morning and you kind of roll in late and you're like, what's up everybody? I'm neg one. So what on? I usually do is uh, I just go to bed like a few hours early, like mm -hmm. just go to sleep at, I don't know, six, maybe okay. you like, if you can adjust your sleep schedule so that going to bed at six is like not crazy then you'll get like a decent number of hours so that you can wake up and you're fully rested and you can play KC Cup at midnight. Right at midnight. Which is, you know, it, it's kind of crazy, but it it works. It lets you, like, you're rested, you're awake, mm -hmm. or, well, I guess you just woke up, but, you know, right. you're not groggy. So did you do that, like, all week, like, it's the middle of the week, you got school or work or whatever, and you're going to bed at 6 o'clock, and your roommates are like, dude, what are you doing? You're like, Casey Cup, bro. Casey Cup. <laughs> no, that's usually just... I end up doing that, like, just the Thursday. Maybe, think, once I tried doing it, like, going to bed, like, really early on a Wednesday, and mm -hmm. then I could go to sleep on Thursday. But... It's like not always six, you know, you don't have to get that many hours. It's right. Like, Just if you have an alarm, if you get like enough sleep, then your body will be fine with it and you can go. Okay. So it's a strong power nap is what you're looking for. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so the question I ask everybody is, what did you eat? Did you eat anything beforehand? Uh, did you get jacked up on Monster or anything like that? Red Bull? Gamer um... subs? <laughs> I um I didn't have anything crazy. I'm trying to I'm honestly trying to remember cuz I honestly believe in the art of brain food, you know, or you got to eat well. You can't just eat a bunch of junk and yeah. go in there. I mean, you, you if you eat too much, you're going to be tired of making bad plays. So you got to eat smart food going into it. Uh, you yeah. can't, you can't be like uh uh, pro circuit scrub who lived off of what was it uh <laughs> cheese sticks and coke zero <laughs> oh yeah it, yeah it was definitely something like that um yeah. but not for me so what i so every morning i would have like an egg with toast nice and like a ton of water like the entire weekend nice what kind of egg what kind of egg hard boiled scrambled um Sunny side up. Nice. All right. Nice. You know, okay. Sometimes a man you know, of culture. Like, a man of culture. Yeah. I like omelets sometimes, you know, but Right. The eggs don't they don't oh. weigh you down. They they, they just get yeah. you going and they don't slow you down. So that's the important thing. So people are like circus, why are you talking about this? All right, so go into it. You want to play like it. a champion, you gotta eat like you, a champion. you start playing awesome. immediately. What's that like? I've never started the cup right away. Is it, it you just hit start and it's just like anything else, right? Yeah. So at the start it's a, it's a bit of a scramble. So like, mm -hmm. you gotta think about when the cup starts. For North America, it's like the dead of night. Mm -hmm. But in other regions, it's like actually not that bad of a time. So like in Europe, it's like seven or eight a.m. somewhere around there, 
and then in Japan and like Asian regions, it's like uh, it's like two p.m. in the afternoon. Okay. Like, so for NA, like the player base is just other than like the hardcore players and the people that are D Gens and you know they stay up late. <laughs> um, you're mostly seeing um, European and Asian representation in okay. the, like the early early times. And is there any difference really? Is it just deck choices maybe? Um, there's a bit of deck choices, but it's also well, yeah, it's mostly deck choices. Okay, maybe um, different text than you're used to seeing. It's mostly the array of decks is much wider because okay. at the start of the KC Cup, what happens is that everyone starts with zero points. So you have to think about that. So if you're like world's player or if you just qualified first time, then you're both at zero points. And the way Konami like does the matchmaking is that they try to pair you with people of similar point range. It's not always perfect, but you know, mm -hmm. you you want like the top players to be competing against each other, and then you can have like mid rank playing against each other, lower rank playing against each other. But, but when everyone's at zero right? points, <laughs> yeah, you're just it's a wild like wild wild west. Like I know in past KC Cups. Early day one, you'll play against anything. You'll play against Cyberstein. You'll play against uh, just random FTK deck or cheese deck. No. Do, do you find that fun, or you just find it frustrating? Like I need to get out of this so I can get up to the real game. Um, it's a mix of like it depends on what your deck is, mm -hmm. because typically those decks aren't good for a number of reasons, and like the meta strategies can just exploit those reasons right. but uh sometimes you just i mean cyber sign is cyber sign so like they'll just open it and then all right well on to the next game so right. <laughs> there's a degree of well just accepting losses but um generally you don't last in that range for too long if you're playing well enough um did you was there a range where you got stuck like at a low range that you didn't expect. Like, oh man, I just got stuck at like seven thousand points and I couldn't move up. Uh, no, I didn't really experience that at any or, or on the early part at least. Okay. I should say. So it was just a steady progression right up the the point. Yeah, it was a ladder. pretty steady progression for a while. Mm -hmm. uh, I see you had seven victories at the end. What was your longest streak? Um, longest streak, it may have been something like 14 or oh so. I don't remember exactly. I, I'd have to look. If I have a screenshot, I might not. But when when you get to that point, do you, are, you're like, God, that was 13, this is 14. Do you ever think, maybe I should just take a break right here? Or are you just like, I'm going. I'm just going to keep going. Uh, So if you want to win KC Cup, you can't be like, you can't be afraid to play, I guess, is the... Right. It's That's just, it, like it, it the can thing. be so punishing, because uh, one quick story I have is I played a guy, uh, he was obviously near the top because he was a Bandit Keith, and he had the the Japanese name for player, or whatever that people use, you know? And yeah. I, was, I was at like 15,000. I didn't really play that much. But when I beat him, I got like 1,500 points for beating him. So that guy had to be... Quite a ways up the ladder, so for him, that was a very costly duel. So the maximum points you can lose is one thousand two hundred. Really? So well, I got probably okay. I won fourteen hundred or something. It was like fourteen. Oh, uh, all right. So yeah, that can happen if you play someone who's really high ranked. That you can just like you get to the result screen and you get a windfall, and it's like you, you hit the jackpot. Right. I was like, wow, I got 1400. I thought that person would also lose 1400. So, still okay, so he still loses 1200. That's still I still got to hurt a little bit. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. A every, any loss is bad, but it's like when you lose maximum, it, it can it can sting a little bit more. Okay. Yeah, I mean, how many of those did you run into? 
Uh, like just bad losses or or like the twelve hundred point losses. Um. Well, most of well, when you're like near the top, mm -hmm. all of your losses are going to be very costly. So okay, generally if everybody's below you. <laughs> yeah. There's a point where you have so many points that like the match making system recognizes that. So like every loss is twelve hundred minus twelve hundred. Oh, that's just devastating. That that that's where I would be afraid to play after a while. I mean, you guys get that way, right? Um, I feel like if it's late in the day three, I might not be as like inclined to play just because. I don't know. I'm exhausted from like how much time I've spent, you know. Mm -hmm. But I think generally I'm not gonna be afraid to play just because I might lose. You have to be thinking, like, how are you going to win? And, like, what steps are you going to take to get there? Right. Okay. I guess I, yeah, I, I would just be nervous at that point. If I was that far up and it's like, because uh, uh, we'll get to it, but it was a really close finish, and I'd be like, man, 1,200 points, that's a lot to lose at this point. Especially if you're, like, you know you're at the top. Everybody's going to be below you. Every loss is costly. Oh, I don't, I don't know. And everybody probably knows what you're playing at that point, so they're probably they're ready for you. Well, so this KC Cup was kind of interesting because uh, a lot of people knew that I was uh, playing, and like they knew who I was, but they didn't know what I was playing. That's like the kind of the wild okay. thing. Well, what what name did you use this time? Were you the the generic Japanese player? Yeah, I was the generic like player name, just right. because anonymity it helps. Like in all right. honesty, if people don't know what you're playing, or like if they know who you are, then they'll like they can remember what you're playing. Right. And sometimes that doesn't really matter because if you're playing a character that gives away your deck, like. In the past, if you would run Sartorius, you know it's Master of Destiny. Like, let's be right. real. But there are other times where, if it's Bandit Keith, it could be like 50 different decks. You don't know. Right. Okay. Well, let's talk a little bit about what you did play. Um, the first deck, I wasn't surprised about at all. So let's go into that one, because this is, this is the negative one bread and butter right here. Um, you can tell us why you went in with E-Sabers first. And I got to comment... This is a very vanilla version of e -Savers. There's, I wouldn't say no spicy text in this, besides maybe the mirror wall. <laughs> but uh, that's the only thing I would consider off the wall. I mean, just Venus Chain, Floodgate, mirror wall. I mean, most of the decks we see nowadays, they're running like one or two of every possible trap they can think of in that deck. Yeah, so the thing with Savers is that when you're facing majority good matchups, what you want above all else is consistency. It's when you you're facing like a wide array of like there's some good matchups, but some like not as good, some kind of iffy. You know, that's when you want to like diversify your back row, and that's when you're rewarded for doing that. Right. Excuse me. But when you're playing all of just one deck. And that's when you want to maximize like consistency because if all of your playing against is like invoke neos, you don't want to run back row that's just going to do nothing against invoke neos, you know? Right. So this so, is so what you're saying is you were running this because you didn't know what you're going to be going up against because it was such a wide variety. Because you said you you played this in the beginning, right? So that's where the wide variety would come in. Um, so at the start, I, it was weird because at first you would expect like a lot of randomness, but there was a surprising amount of Neos at the beginning. Oh, okay. And like as okay. the day or like as the hours progressed, there was like an incredible amount of Invoke Neos and like a decent amount of like, you know, a little bit of Black Wings or Karakuri sprinkled in. Okay, so it was so, actually more refined than I thought it would be. Okay, so that's why yeah. you wanted a more refined deck list. Yeah. 
So if you look at this, you look at like the three Fiendish Chain, three Mi Floodgate, and three Mirror Wall. So uh, the reason why I do three Fiendish Chain, three Floodgate is because these traps lock up space. So against Invoke Neos, they have like no way to clear their own monsters, and like that's a problem for them. You look at um, a lot of their weaknesses. Like if you have a Wall of D, for example. That's really good against Invoke Neos because they just like flood the board with a bunch of bodies. So if you Wall of D, you're always getting like at least sixteen hundred on their mm -hmm. monsters. So having Fiendish Chain and Floodgate, it just locks up space for them, and then they have to like wait. And then eventually you draw Alistair, and then you just use the volcanic shell that they put in the graveyard for you right. to summon Perg and OTK them. Okay. But why the mirror wall? So mirror wall was a tech for both Neos and for Karakuri. So um, as I mentioned, Wall of D gets value out of, against Neos, but mirror wall also gets value against Neos because um, just battle traps in general, Neos doesn't deal very well with. It's a beatdown deck, and like their only way to block is with their face. So, <laughs> right. You look at uh, Neos as an engine. It's all beaters. All of the monsters, their only purpose is to attack. Right. They don't so, have a lot of monster effects, like negates. And yeah. Summon. Their monster yeah. effects is summon monster. Right. And, like. <laughs> <laughs> so they summon Keeper, they summon Neos, and then they summon Perg eventually. And like all of those monsters just attack. They don't pop anything, they don't negate anything, they don't flip anything face down. Right. They don't have any real like monster engine built in effects. It's really they're relying on their back row to do those like wide variety of things. So having a mirror wall is pretty good because they're they're forced to swing in at some point because that's what their deck has to do, and then at that point you just mirror wall, and then um, their Neos has to like they have to decide do I protect with my Neos fusion and then keep this small monster on the board, and then if they do mirror wall pays two thousand and then you can destiny draw eventually. Okay. So there's like built-in synergy with the skill. But um, the reason why I went with Mirror Wall and not Wall of D is because of Karakuri. So Karakuri, as many people already know, runs Hey True Nade. Hey, and uh, that's Trunade. really scary. True. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So having a battle trap that they True Nade, you can flip up Mirror Wall so like, you survive. Because it's really hard for them to OTK through a Mirror Wall. They need, I think, like... Gold dust, but they need a lot mm -hmm. just to kill through a mirror wall. And even then, I'm not even sure they can if you have like a monster on field. Okay. Yeah, that's an interesting tech. How do you feel? Little side note here quickly Kara Curry oh, uh, using Hatred Aid, does that need to be semi limited? Well, controversial opinion. I think Hatred Aid might be a bad idea for the game it might not be like you look at you look at uh, black wings on release they use true nade and that was really unhealthy you look at uh i suppose dark lords would use true nade and it's like our masked heroes use true nade and it's like hmm i wonder if these decks were the problem or if it's true nade so yeah i think maybe you could semi-limit a card from Karakuri, but really, I think you should cut, uh, get just, rid of True Nade. I think we could do with that. Yeah, yeah. kind of like Treacherous Trap Hole. You know, some cards, they're a little... Eh, we, could, we would be better without them. Let's just say that. All right, well, Treacherous Trap Hole, we don't see too often anymore. And when you do get hit with it, you're just like, oh my god, I forgot all about that. A lot yeah. of decks just don't have the room for them anymore. All right, so we're playing E-Sabers. And how far did you get with that deck? 
So for the first, I'd say like eight hours I played Saber. Did you just hear that, folks? The first eight hours. I think I played a total of four hours <laughs> for the whole cup. All right, so the first eight hours. E-Sabers, uh, how many points you get with it? Uh, I think it was like 42,000, somewhere around oh, man. there. Man, you're making me look bad. I played E-Sabers, and I peaked at like 17. <laughs> <laughs> and I was happy. And I was happy with that. So 42,000. And at that point, did you start to stall out? Um, so at that point I started to see like the meta shifting a bit. I started seeing um some different like decks change in popularity. Mm -hmm. Something I noticed that Invoke Neos was like slowly going down in popularity while Karakuri was slowly going up. Okay, okay. I could see that. We we so, were predicting a big uh Karakuri KC Cup. Yeah, for sure. So I think once I started uh, preparing for the KC Cub, I like I tested how Karakuri was because you know I saw a lot of people trying it, mm -hmm. and it felt it was it's really strong because I mean True Nate is just an insane card. So and then if you if you've ever played against Karakuri, you know how like how the combo goes. They only it's like super consistent. They always end on like. Two synchros and a monster, they draw some cards, mm -hmm. and then they can... Because they've drawn so many cards, it's very hard for a lot of other decks to compete with that. Yeah, it's a very fast deck. For sure. Alright, so finally you made the switch. Were you on a losing streak, or did you just decide, you know what, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to switch it out? I think sometimes it's a losing streak, but sometimes it's just you're not gaining points so okay. when a casey cup you do need to gain points the thing is like if you just if you win and then you lose you win lose win lose win lose then you're not gaining points so even if you're going even that's not enough to win casey cup you do need to have more wins than losses and that's that was my whole casey cup in a nutshell win win lose win lose lose win win lose lose win lose yeah that's why I just sat right around that 17,000. Um, okay, so you make the change. Now, I, before the cup, would have predicted that you were going to play Witchcrafters. I've been seeing you play it a lot more recently. I felt like it was your new Crystrons. I felt like um, this is the deck that you're going to say has the most available plays for it, you know, like Crystrons kind of did. Um, yeah. And I thought for sure that would be the deck that you're going into. And I was wrong you played triamids <laughs> what when you first told me when you're like oh you're not gonna believe what i play and that's where i was like did you actually play stromberg because we also predicted that there would be some stromberg and there people meme around <laughs> with it and i was gonna laugh my ass off if it was if it was stromberg when you said triamids i was like huh i could see that and I think it would take someone that's got the, the galaxy brain to pull it off in the KC Cup. So why would you even think of switching to Triamids? And was this a last second decision or did you plan this out way ahead of time? All right. So um, earlier in this week, the, a, uh, a Japanese event happened. I, I don't know like the exact specifications to it, but... Um, from that event, I heard that Triamids actually did very well, and that Karakuri was played heavily. So these two things were very interesting to me, because one, I knew Karakuri was, it was going to be popular, you know? Like, mm -hmm. Karakuri is a very strong deck, it can use Trunade, it can use Offerings, so on and so forth. But Triamids was a deck I kind of wrote off initially oh, yeah, just yeah. because uh, it like you look at tournament events it wasn't performing like very well like it it would have a top or two but like pretty much nobody was running it oh uh, like, it got a tournament win and we made like three videos about it because <laughs> uh, it was such I, like oh I, my god try him it's yeah i remember seeing like the videos that are like pop up and it's like try mids really yeah really yeah. I mean, that's how, like, my team, like, uh, responded when I told them what I was running. Like, 
they're like, hey, what are you running? And I'm like, Triamids. And they're like, oh, okay. Yeah, if you didn't want to tell us, you could have just said so. <laughs> I, but, I, um, yeah, it's just not something you expect because compared to the other decks in the meta right now, it's very slow. And like we were saying about uh, Invoke Neos, um, the monsters really don't have a lot of effects. I mean, the master does a little bit. Uh, the hunter, yeah, I mean they they do, but they don't. They're, you're not negating. Yeah, you're not. I mean, I guess I guess the master can pop, but you have to sacrifice a card to do it. it I don't know. It just seems a lot slower and uh, not as yeah. sophisticated as a lot of the decks out there today. Yeah. So you look at the decks or the monsters in this deck, and it's like they are like old school Yu Gi Oh level right. monsters, like. Matt, um, Hunter says you just summon another Trimid. Right. Which is like, it's cool and all, but your options are an 1800 and a 600. Right. So, <laughs> is that really good? But, and then Dancer, it's it's got nice defense, but it, it, it like takes time for it to like boost your monsters right. until it's like a threat. And then Master, it's a one for one trade. So, it's, you're not actually. You can pop a card, but you're not going plus, you know. Right, right. You're just you're just staying even. All right, and then the Sphinx is that what uh, changed the whole thing around for you? Uh, the Sphinx changes a lot about the deck because mm -hmm. now they have access to a big body almost instantly. So the problem with Triamids earlier. Uh, among like some other things, they had a hard time against like negation. Um, I know Arc Lords came in and it really killed the deck because they couldn't deal with um, Sanctified Dark yep. Lord and negating their monsters. They couldn't run Cosmic Cyclone. Eventually, they just lose because all their monsters are too weak and they can't boost up. Right here, because you have Triumid Sphinx, it's always going to be. Um, you're like almost always going to have a boost on it because you're activating your triamid effects to swap the field spells. So it's not uncommon to have like a four thousand attack triamid sphinx on like the when you summon it. Okay. And it's like you're summoning it on like turn like three or four, like very reliably. Mm -hmm. And was that a game decider a lot of the times? Uh, I'd say it definitely was. So there are times when people would attack in, and then you just swap out a field spell and then search the Sphinx. They kill your monster, and then you drop Sphinx on them. And then their battle phase ends, because they can't swing over like a 4,000 attack Triamid. Right. Okay. Um, I'm trying to see here. You got the, you got the mirror wall, uh, I'm, I'm guessing, for the same reason that you had it in your E-Saber e deck. Yeah, so I had Mirror Wall because um, you just want something to survive through Trunade. Mm -hmm. uh, Karakuri, like, um, it slowly progressed to being, like, overwhelmingly most played. So I think over half of my your games would be Karakuri if you were playing oh, wow. on, okay. around that time. Uh so, so you want something to survive through Trunade. Right. Yeah. Okay. And then I see you're running Treacherous Trap Hole. Just, we all know what that does, but that's just a great card to start the game with. Yeah. So uh, Treacherous, it, it's pretty... It, it's plus one. And um, it's also nice against like Black Wings because, you know, you're not going to see all of one deck in KC Cup, you will see occasionally like Black Wings and against a deck like that, you really need some cards to just blow them out. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it's very difficult. Okay, and then uh, the Pulse also there for Destruction. Did you ever use the other effect where you could summon from the graveyard with it? So, of the three effects, I, you use the Pop the most, but you do use the Summon effect quite a few times. There are times where you will want to banish two to summon out another body, because when you have multiple bodies on the field, that's when you can cycle field spells more. And when you can cycle more field spells, that's when you can uh, generally like get more effects off, and that's how you gain card advantage. 
Well, I think the biggest complaint about the deck or that card in particular was you have to banish two to get it to work. And a lot of times you don't want to be banishing two. You want the dancer to recycle those field spells and, and whatnot back into the deck. Yeah, so that is like a concern, but you have to think long term, it's more valuable to get multiple field spells into play than it is to just keep all of your field spells. You know, you you really can't get greedy with this deck. You have to be willing to accept, hey, I might want to keep all three of my Trimid Cruisers in the game, or I might want to keep all of my King Golems, but sometimes you do have to just banish like uh, a Cruiser and like a King Golem to get yourself into the game, mm -hmm. you know? So, did that happen more than... I'm guessing it happened more than once when you play some 500 games, but... Yeah, I'd I mean, say, like, uh, maybe 70 or 80% of the time I was using the effect, I was using the first effect, and then the rest, I was mostly using the second effect to revive. Mm -hmm. So, it's not like you use it all the time, but you do, you know, you have to be aware that it's an option. So, did you ever find yourself running out of resources? Um, I think there are times when you kind of run low on resources. I think against control decks, especially. So it's so, so costly against, to keep up with them. Yeah, I could see that. Yeah, so yeah. against like Purgatrio, because the decks that run Purgatrio have three Purgatrio, um, generally your best bet is to just pop it. Because if you, even if you summon Sphinx, even if it's bigger than Purg, Generally, you have enough cards on the field that it boosts it up to like a point where Alistair boosting over is a viable option for them. Okay. And you just don't want to let them do that. So, right, so you end up banishing up to six cards to get rid of three Purgatrios? Um, you do end up like at least like popping it once or twice is mm -hmm. definitely something you have to do. Uh, with Mirror Wall and with Treacherous, you do like a free out to at least one of them but mm -hmm. yeah okay did you find that because you, you're always talking about consistency and one thing we were talking about the problem with a deck like this and other decks like this is yeah your opening hand can be great it can be busted it can be broken but if you can't finish the game quickly or you get put in a position where you're a little bit behind it's really hard to recover resources with a balanced deck um, did you find that as a problem? Yeah, so I'll get into this later, but like um, a problem I was having day three was that uh, some of the decks I was playing against were just like so much more aggressive than what I was playing. Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, Karakuri is uh, not Karakuri, sorry, uh, Trimids is a normal summon deck. Right. You're, you're, your plays turn one are normal summon, and maybe you do a second normal summon. Right. Like, it's very standard. It's not crazy. So, uh, like, I'd see Lightsworn, Levineer, mm -hmm. you know, that deck. Yep. They just mill a ton of cards and then, like, nuke the board. That was, that was really annoying. Um, and then a Witchcrafter. They started running Machine Angel Ritual, mm -hmm. so that protects um, the Madame Vere yep. from a destruction effect. So that makes uh, Treacherous worse. It makes Trimid Pulse worse. So, I guess I'm more aware. Like you, you, you summon the Hunter. You summon the Master off off the effect of the Hunter, and then you get hit with some kind of effect where they pop one or two of them. Something like that. It's almost, I wouldn't say impossible, but it's a very difficult recovery at that point, right? It can be challenging for sure, but generally um, you're able to, if it's, um, if it's not like treacherous first turn, like you summon two monsters, they treach both. Well, I guess you lose in that case, but um, other scenarios, you can generally survive even if they kill just one. Because of Sphinx. Well, I'm also looking... Uh, did you ever get the hands where maybe you get, like, Pulse, Fortress, uh, <laughs> Dancer, Sphinx, or something like that? 
Uh, yeah. So... Yeah, those hands are, like, kind of iffy, <laughs> and you, you just gotta shrug them off and, like, hope your opponent doesn't right. have anything too overwhelming. But even in those scenarios, like, you can... You just have to play to the numbers and, like, try to play to what's the best choice that will put me in a position that I can win. Mm-hmm. So, like... You'd activate field spell, you would summon dancer, you'd set pulse, and then on their turn, if they swing in, you can trade the fortress for a cruiser, and then when they kill dancer, you summon the sphinx. And then in that position, you have a cruiser on field, whatever you draw, if you draw any spell or if you draw any monster, you're going to have a second body on the field. Because if you draw a spell, you switch it out or you replace the cruiser and then you search a monster, or if you draw a monster, well, you have a tag for your spells. Listen to this guy. I give him a, a hypothetical hand, and he already has the answer to it. This is what it takes, folks. You want to be at the top, you got to know your deck inside and out. So, how long did you play this particular version of the deck? Uh, I played this version like build the most um i think there were times when like the mirror wall i would swap for like a power sink stone mm-hmm. but generally it was mirror wall for the most okay uh, for most of the cut so you uh e-savers were at forty thousand. uh you played this how far did you get with this version so from zero zero to forty two thousand did i say yeah, somewhere in there. Yeah, so 0 to 42 was Elman Sabres, and then 42, say, 56 is when like I started playing Triumids. Okay. So there is a point, like, at 56 points, like, I felt like maybe I should swap my deck. So this is a mistake. <laughs> it, it, <laughs> Uh, there's like um, there's like an unwritten rule of KC Cup that if you switch your deck, you will see a bad matchup. Mm-hmm. So if you keep swapping your deck, you will always see bad matchups. It's like okay, I don't know how it works, but it's like a ru- It's like a constant of the universe, you know. Okay, so you did not switch though. Um, there was a period where I was like using different decks trying stuff to see what oh, would okay. work okay so from hour eight to 14 i was using this trimid deck mm-hmm. and then around hour 14 i like i tried swapping i forget what to the point is i swapped to something else and it did not work what was it be honest so, was it stromberg be honest i have i have i don't even remember it may have been sabers it may have been black wings it may have been karakuri i think you know um, exactly what you switched to you just don't want to admit to it i don't remember it may have been karakuri actually okay. just because it, it's a really strong deck so right now you've just admitted uh to playing like 14 hours straight i mean it's not actually 14 hours straight, but it's oh, like, okay. I take breaks. Like, when I say zero to eight hours, it's like, that's the time frame of okay. the climb. Okay. It's okay. like, in the background, like, I'll, like, go eat, or I'll, you know, take a break. Uh, just, so- like, relax. Try to talk to some friends who are also playing. Are you like, uh, what do you got? Like a comfy chair? Are you laying in bed? Are you on the sofa? What are you doing? I have a comfy chair and a comfy mattress. So oh, so you kind of switch between two, the two comfy pillows. There yeah. you go. So do you, do you lay on the back and have the game ahead of you or above you? Because I hate that because you know, like your arms get sore after a while. Are you laying on your side, just kind of. What are you doing? I usually lay on my side, but sometimes I'll like sit up, like. And just sit on my bed. You okay. Know? See, I, I feel like I almost have to be like an attack position when I play. Like I can't just like lay down and play. I just it just doesn't work. I feel like I drop the phone on me too many times or something like that. <laughs> yeah. 
that that's like annoying especially like if you play for a long time and you're tired like holding it above you like i, I made that mistake one casey cup where i would like lay in bed and i was tired and then i must have dropped like the phone on me on my face like three times or something and then i was like <laughs> okay maybe i need to sleep <laughs> so um you said you take breaks and, and talk to people now uh do you use uh you have discord obviously um do you have it turned off or silenced or whatever while you're playing the games? Um, yeah, like I'll check Discord every once in a while. You know, like I'll take breaks, mm-hmm. obviously, but generally I'm not gonna pay too much attention to Discord. Um, yeah, because I only feel... check it. Well, I was yeah, every say, I always hours. feel bad because like I always like to see how Neg's doing during the cup, so I'll be like. I, I, I try to keep the messages to like one or two a day at tops, right? I'll just be like, hey, how's it going? Something like that. But I'm always worried that like he's in the middle of like a clutch battle. You know, it's coming down. He's, his timer's at like 10 seconds. You know, he's got to make this like complicated play. And all of a sudden the notification bar comes down. It's like circus. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> you know, <laughs> that's like my biggest fear. So I'm always like, okay, I'm going to be real careful. I'm going to be uh, real respectful if possible. But now that I know that... <laughs> Uh, that you're not doing yeah. that. You know, you're just checking them. I'm, I'm going to spam you more. Do you have the notifications on? If you're going <laughs> to... You do have them off? Okay. I, would, I was joking that I do have them on. Don't message me. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then. I won't. <laughs> I mean, I, I like the messages of, like, people asking, you know, how are you doing? Like, you know, checking in. Yeah. Like, just playing by yourself in a room silently is... That would probably drive you insane. So, like, having friends to talk to is pretty nice. Well, I always, you know, because I know you take this pretty serious, so I just want to be like, hey, you know, I'm over here. I got I got my uh, my pennant, you know, my flag, my neg one flag, and I'm over here woo, real quietly in the corner cheering for you. Um, but you know, golf I, claps and all. Yes, yeah, exactly. I just don't want to intrude too much because I know this, this is like your Super Bowl or your playoff season every two months. So it's just like, go get them, go get them, Neg. You know, but I don't, I, I just don't want to be intrusive. That's all. Especially when I'm like, yeah. hey, how's it going? You're like, the one I was like, hey, how's it going today? And you're like, I'm currently in battle for first place. I'm like, oh, shit, sorry. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> That yeah. one, that was the one where I imagine where like you're like right in the middle of shit because I'm like, how's it going? You're like, I'm busy. Get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> that one, I think I was just like, um, I got like a lot of people messaging me about like, hey, what deck are you running? Or like, what build are you running? And I'm like, I got to just answer these at, as fast as possible. Right, and then I can bam, go back bam, to bam, 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 bam. grinding. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, so you're somewhere in the 50s at this point with this deck. Um, why did you want to change? You, it sounds like you played a bunch of decks you don't want to admit to. Why did you come back to Triamids, and then why did you change it up? Okay, so um, I have like most of this time stamped, so like I know like from what times, what decks I like, or what strategies I was trying. Like when I stopped playing Triamids, and then when I started playing Triamids again. Yeah. So hour 14 until like hour i think 48 or something i stayed in the same point range the entire time i stayed be- like at 56,000 oh my god i'm not joking i would go up and i'd almost hit 60,000 and then i'd go back down and then i hit 50,000 and then i'd go up and down and it just like a ping pong that's like, like 25 no matter how, hours, right? Would you say 24 hours worth of playing? Um, 34 hours. That's like 34. Yeah, 34 hours. Oh my god. That's yeah. almost the whole cup. <laughs> yeah, that's like almost half. Yeah. At that point, were you just like, F this, I'm out of here? Oh, I was considering like, just <laughs> maybe this isn't for me. <laughs> you know, maybe, I'm- you know, there's a lot of like everyone has like bad Casey cups, so it's like you right. know it's no shame in like not performing well, but it's like this was one of those where maybe I should just be happy that like I got to play at all 
and the <laughs> tap out. Oh, wow. So, like, yeah. So you got to a point where you're just like, F it. I've been here for 34 hours. I'm just going back to try mids. Yeah, that more or less that was the game plan. Like, I <laughs> at that point, I was like, okay, literally nothing I tried works. What if I just go back to what I was working at some point, you know? Like, right. Maybe it wasn't working at like that time for a little bit, but ultimately it's all I got, you know? Right. I may so as well give it a shot. You're into game th or day three at this point, right? Yeah. Okay. So it's day three. It's go for broke. Yeah. So day three, like I start day three with, I don't know, 56,000 still. So I'm like, I think I messaged um, Sunsun. I think most people know who Sun Sun is. He's um, a Japanese player. He's been yeah. to Worlds. So I asked him, hey, how's it going? And he's like, you know, I'm at like, uh, I think at the time he was either at 60, he may have been at 70,000, I think. He was doing pretty well. So I was like, I hope you do well. I probably am not going to perform very well because <laughs> I've been at the same points. And yeah. I'm like, yeah. So at that point, like, I was considering, like, maybe I should throw in the towel. But it's like, well, I prepared so much. It'd be a shame to just throw it all away. I may as well give it one last try with Trimids. Mm -hmm. So I swapped back to Trimids. It, the, this same build. Just like the mirror wall, the two treacherous, okay, and the okay. three cruiser. Or the, not, sorry. The pulse. The three yeah. pulse. Yeah. And for some reason, like this time, it just started working more. Okay. And then from here, like I started climbing very fast, like 60K, and I was like, hey, finally. And then I got to 70K, and I was like, hey. All, All right. right. Here we go. Here we go. And then, like, I kept playing and playing, and I'm like, I hit 80k, and I'm like, it's possible. It's possible. <laughs> <laughs> the end is in sight. I can, right. I can see it in my mind's eye. Yeah. You know. So you keep so, playing. So. Yeah, and then I hit. I, I get pretty far with just this build. Mm -hmm. And then near the end, um, there was a shift. So Car Curry was still played, but it wasn't like as majority played. Okay. At which point, I think there was a lot of more Witchcrafter, and there was more like. Um, there was Megalith. I'm not sure if how many people have heard, but yes, Megalith was very. It, it was performing very well. By one person in the KC Cup. They Andy were performing. Crusher, he plays yeah. in our tournaments all the time. Uh, when I do the power rankings, I always have to add Megalith into the damn power rankings while I'm recording <laughs> stuff. I'm always like, why does this guy keep playing Megaliths? I have to record it every week that this guy played Megaliths. And here he is in the KC Cup <laughs> clapping with it. Yeah. So little did we know, Megalith actually destroys Car Curry. <laughs> Or like it has a really good matchup against Curry. Okay. So the fact that he was running, he's been running Megalith for months. Right. So right. all of this time spent playing a meme deck, like actually prepared for him for the Casey Cup. Right. Which kind of right. it, it's kind of nuts to think about, but he ran into yeah. enough Curry Curry that he got up into what was like the ninety thousand points. Yeah, that's how much Curry Curry it was. There was right. like if you had a good Curry Curry matchup. You actually just gain points so fast. So that's like that's why he was doing well, and that's why I was doing well because both of our decks can like they can play like through True Nade, like they can survive and they can win games against okay. Car Curry. All right. So the meta shifts though, and you started you started seeing Witchcrafters. Yeah. So I started seeing more Witchcrafter, and like for some reason, a lot of players were picking up this well Megalith. not a lot of players mostly japanese players but they were playing this lightsworn oh, levy okay. deck yep so 
I, th I think most people know how it works, but it's like you activate charge of the light brigade, and then you activate solar recharge, and then you mill your entire deck, and then you summon chaos dragon levianir. You blow up the field, or you summon fortune lady every, and then and then you summon levianir. You know, it's like I think most people generally know how it goes. Right. So the thing about that is that uh, Trimids, they're a normal summon deck, and they don't really do deal too well against uh, Levianir mm -hmm. or Fortune Lady Every. Like, both of those cards, like, just destroy the deck. Because um, the way you kill Fortune Lady Every is either you return it to the extra deck or you banish it. Right. Primids can do neither. <laughs> All right? <laughs> okay. Like, their, own, their out to things is destroying... By card effect or just hitting it. Okay. So they they don't deal with Fortune Lady every like at all. And Levionaire um is it's like I think it's pretty clear that Levionaire just destroys any control deck. So um the back in April when Thunder Dragon was like a big deck. Uh, Levianir was so strong that it it almost completely eradicated like a lot of control decks from the meta, mm -hmm. or like it made it so difficult for control to compete because Levianir pops two cards on summon, so it's like you either negate this or you lose two cards, which in control that's a big problem. Right. Like if you're losing cards for free, essentially then you don't recover. Because as you mentioned, like control decks, like especially this deck, um, if you're low on cards, it's hard to recover from that. So uh, both of those, like every Fortune Lady, every and Chaos Dragon Levianir in one deck was like insanely difficult to deal with. Mm -hmm. So, so then that's you, when... You made a sorry? switch, right? Yeah. So... I like I wasn't sure if I should keep playing Triamids because it's like, well, if my deck just folds to this Levianir deck and it's like multiple people are playing it, you know, I'm seeing it at least one in every ten games, maybe one in every five games. Um how do I deal with this? And generally, like the thing I've learned from Casey Cups is that sometimes you don't when you want to switch decks, don't. You don't switch decks, you switch your tech cards. Okay. So instead of switching away from Triamids, I switched um, the Mirror Wall and the two Treacherous for three Power Sink Stone. Okay. So, and, and where'd you get this idea from? So this I got from watching uh, Nifroth. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so he's a good, like, he's friend of mine and like um if you don't know who he is nifroth is a twitch streamer he's he's great this guy gets like king of games like 15 times a month he yeah knows, he plays every deck he knows every deck and he's just he's fun to watch so if you, if you haven't seen him i'm gonna promote him right now go check him out on twitch he usually streams uh if you're in north america it's what kind of like early to mid morning because he's over in eu yeah so yeah yeah he streams like uh morning times yeah. All right. So power sync. So though, what does that do for the deck? Well, I found out about it like through Nif because like he cogs so many times that um, uh, sometimes you're not always gonna be able to because you're cogging with different decks. You're not gonna be able to cog with a meta deck every time. So at some points you have to go like off meta, right. and like there are multiple times where he just cogs with trimids, and it's like. He runs Power Sync Stone, so that's where I found out about the card. Okay. And what does so, it do? So Power Sync Stone says that um, each time a monster effect is activated, uh, you put a counter on it. And so, well, when it resolves, that's, just, that's like a... It's a minor point, but I'll get to that. So when a monster effect resolves, you put a counter on it. And so when it has two counters, uh, neither player can activate effects, and all monster effects are negated. Oh, wow. Okay. On the field, at least. 
So when the game plan is, um, well, generally the card you'd expect is so that people can only use two monster effects per turn, I'll use two, and then you get to use two. But that's the boring way to use it. The <laughs> triumphant way to use it is that you flip it up in the draw phase. All right? All right. It resolves. You activate your triumphant effect to target your field spell, then you swap it out. All right, that's one counter. You activate your other triumphant effect to swap it out. You have two counters. Your opponent cannot activate monster effects on the field, and all their monster effects on the field are negated. Oh, ouch. So, yeah, so this is good against Levineer because, like, if they summon it, it's just a vanilla 3000. Yeah. And you can kill that easy. Right. If they summon every, it's a zero attack monster. <laughs> because not only does their effects not activate, they, the effects are negated. So <laughs> they're summoning a, a zero zero. Right. So. You know, now that I think about it, I just I just had a, a memory, a quick memory here from the KC Cup when I was checking the the scores, the rankings, and I saw in first place at one point a guy up there and his name was Hi Nifroth. Was that you? That was me. Yeah. That was I, now that you said that <laughs> that's funny. Uh that's great. I was wondering, I'm like, is that Nag? Because I know yeah. you like to shout out people when you're at the top like that, so that's awesome. Yeah. So like, uh, I think I checked Twitch and like Nif just started streaming. So I was like, I changed my name to Hi Nif. Oh, so, so when he was checking the stuff on stream, yeah, he said Hi Nif. Oh, that's great. That's great. So this is what you made your final run with then. Yeah. So this was like crazy good. Um, also against like the megaliths. Like, they can't do anything to this. Like, oh, okay. Because the deck is all monsters, they can't run, like, tech cards like Cosmic Cyclone or Removal because they'll brick with it. Okay. So, in draw phase, against the Megalith guy, I would flip it up in draw phase, and then he would just scoop because he knows he can't beat it. Uh, as soon as he saw you, he's like, F this guy, I'm out. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's literally, I won in, I, like, I FTK'd him, essentially. <laughs> <laughs> just one card that's all it took yeah all right so this is where uh did you say like eighty thousand? you made the switch or ninety thousand? um you... it was it was high up there i don't remember exactly but mm -hmm. um it was like the last day so like i was already pretty high in the points right but um because there was so much like uh light sworn and the um uh Witchcrafter, I had to like, I was losing points, so I had to adapt to gain points back. So right. I ultimately swapped away from the mirror wall and the treacherous to power sink stone. Okay. And then you're making your final run. Did you play all the way up until midnight? Um, no. That's when it ends for us. It ends at midnight. Yeah. Um. So I didn't play because like I messaged the guy in second. I was like. Hey, are you gonna play? And he's like, "No, I've stopped." I'm like, "Okay, I guess I'll stop too." <laughs> right. And then um, after the final update, it's like I'm in first. So, and he said he stopped. So at that point, I'm like, "Okay, I guess I win." And then he played another game, and uh, he finished first. So uh, that, that's brutal, man. It was uh, you said he won by 67 points. Yeah. So 67 points. It's not even, it's not a win. It's not half a win. It's not even a tenth of a win. Right. It's less than a tenth of a win. But I mean, yeah. it's 67. How does that it's make still you feel? 67 it, points. It, that's got to sting a little bit. Yeah. I mean, technically, it's not against the rules, you know? Right. But it's still pretty grimy. I am. Oh, okay. So you're a little upset. Kind of like a gentleman's agreement, right? Like, we're done. We're done. And then he was just like, screw Neg. I'm playing one more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he reneged on the promise. Oh, God. Oh, God. That's terrible. 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 Um, so I, I remember because I was up late last night um, and you messaged me and you were like, I think I'm in first place. I'm like, nice. 
And then it was just a few minutes later, you're like, I'm in second place. I'm like, no, what happened? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, just... At that point, like, he posted on Twitter that he, like, he played a game, and then it's just like, <sighs> all right, it's, uh, <laughs> That's so risky at that point, right? He was just yeah. like, I'm going in. I'm going in. I, I'm in second place. What do I have to lose, right? Yeah. Was there a point, uh, like I mentioned before, where I played that guy, and I, I gained 1,400, but you said you could only lose 12. Was there a point where you lost? You said you lose a lot of 1,200-point matches, but w did you ever lose 1,267 points? Or 1,167 points where it's like, man, if I just had that one big um, right there. Um, uh, I don't recall. that It was like... Or just one wasn't around or... there for too long, man. If yeah. I just won that one game earlier that I lost, I mean, yeah, you can. There's a lot of what ifs in this yeah. scenario, so it's like I generally don't like dwelling on the like, oh man, if right. Kona if there's something changed on like Konami's side and I got more points, like ultimately. It's your responsibility to win those games, right? And if if you don't win, it's like, well, you have the entire KC Cup to fix right. that. Like, you can complain about luck in a game or two, but ultimately, luck evens out over the course of the cup. Well, and I remember saying, you know, I'm like, second place is still really good, man. And you're just like, it means nothing to me. I was like, whoa. <laughs> Wow. So, I mean, that, that hits you pretty hard. Well, okay, so think of it this way. In the Konami rules, it states that if first place is already qualified for Worlds, the next, the next highest ranked player will be given the invite. Right, and you're already qualified so for Worlds because last year and then they had to cancel Worlds, so you already have an invite for the next, yes. the next Worlds. So I am qualified for the 2021 Worlds already. Yes. However, I still wanted to win because, like, the prestige of like winning a second KZ Cup is like that's like crazy, you know? Right. Right. How like how many people have done that? Right. And that it's like so. Even if it's like, oh, what do you get out of it? Oh, you don't like get anything. You don't get another Worlds invite. And it's like, well, if you're only playing for the world's invite, it's like you can't really get too mad, I guess. But it's like if you're playing to be the best, then you will play regardless. Right. And that's why it hurt because you're like, I don't I, I don't need the invite. I just want to be the yeah. best there ever was. Yeah. So it's like. If you want to like. From my perspective, if I get first, and Zalug, so the guy who uh, got first is named like Zalug. Um, he's from Japan. So if I get first and Zalug gets second, I get get first, and he still gets his world's invite, right? Like, right. We both get something out of this arrangement. He gets first, and I get second. He still gets his world's invite. But I don't get first, <laughs> so I get nothing. So it's uh, like the reason why I was okay with this at first was because we both get something out of this agreement, you know. But right. in this situation, I get nothing. And well, I guess I shouldn't say second place nothing, but it if you've won a Casey Cup, a, after you taste gold, silver is never the same. Right. Right. I'll just put it that way. Yeah, it's just, uh, I'm sure it's just a disappointment. Most people watching this video would just kill to be in the top 100, and you're looking at second place like it's an utter defeat. Yeah. That's, I mean, the, just the level you're playing at right now, which is, yeah. you know, I guess you can't complain about that. I mean, I, I mentioned that to you. I'm like, you keep proving that you're one of the best players in the world right now. And what'd you say? What'd you say? Do you remember? I think I said, well, you're like, I said, I just 
than my goal. Like my goal is to be the best of all time. You're yeah. like, I want to be the so, best, not one of the best. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, fair enough, man. I'm and I like the tenacity. And I I felt bad for you when you you had to message everybody around because you went, Hey, I won, I'm in first place. And then you gotta make those retracting statements. You're like, damn it, I'm in second place. And uh, you know, I, I, I was just I was heartbroken. I was like, No, no, say it ain't so, Neg, say it ain't so. Yeah. It's it's sad, but I guess in every KC Cup you don't win, like if you do if you did want to win it to begin with, you should take it as a learning experience. Mm -hmm. So I suppose this was it was insightful to some degree at least, I guess. Right. So I'm guessing you're already planning for the next one. You're gonna play in the next one for sure? I don't know if I'm <laughs> I don't know if I am just because like after this it's not after this one it's like oh I don't know if I want to play this game anymore or I, blah blah really? blah I don't want to be yeah. like super pessimistic about it and like like be all mopey just because that you don't really need that level of negative energy right in your life but there's just like some things with the game that I think I really hope are addressed, and if they're not addressed, it's like I'm not sure if I can bring myself to play another Casey Cup with these things. All right. So like, I was I was working towards the conclusion of the video, but now you open a can of worms, Neg. What needs uh, it's to be addressed? short. What needs to be addressed? It's really just that like, element sabers and black wings, I guess. Yeah. Some decks. It's okay if some decks stay around for a while, but like Elmen Sabers and Black Queens, like they rose to prominence in November and they have been meta since then. So um it's not to say that they're unhealthy, mm -hmm. but I think those decks we've had them around for so long that they're not only stale, but like they're not increasing the interaction, I guess, of the game. Right. So you look at uh, Black Queens, it's an OTK deck, and like, it's not very interactive. Um, you look at Element Sabers, they just try to flip everything and then perg OTK. So, how interactive is that? And it's right. like, when they came out, there was like a lot of cool stuff you could learn and you can try, but and you have things for as long as we have. It's like we've learned and we've tried and we've. I feel like we have a good idea of how the things operate. That it's not really enriching the player experience, so to speak, mm -hmm. to just keep them around. So you it, you just want to see a new meta by by the time yeah. November rolls around. So the TLDR of that is that. I, I just want new decks. <laughs> so if I have to play Invoke Element Sabers for another Casey Cup, I don't know what I'm, I don't know, man. I, I think, don't think I, think I can we're do all it. ready for a change. Don't worry. I think we're all yeah. ready for a change. But I think to be fair, uh, I think just everything's being hit by a lot of people might either roll their eyes at this, but COVID has slowed a lot of things down. People are working from home. There's just less people working on things just in general, everywhere you go, even, you know, if you try to get customer service over the phone or uh, through email or whatever, everything's just slower right now. Yeah, than you you have a wait time or like everything's just automated. Yeah. So I think that I think with the game is just, they're doing what they can, you know, they're probably not yeah. making a lot of changes with it because they probably got like five guys working on it remotely, you know? So Hopefully, all those five guys can come up with something good for Zexel release. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, no. So, anything else? Uh, no, I think... Well, oh, yeah. So, in addition to this, um, I'm also going to... I'm planning on releasing, like, an article on, like, the DLM website. Mm -hmm. I'm sure most people are aware of, like, the site, but... Um, just really seeing like a competitive article, you know, going over um, like my deck and like card choices and like stuff like that. So everything so, you just listened to for the past hour, 
but he's going to write it down. You're going to have to read it. <laughs> Think about that one. Think about that one. No, check it out. Neg's a great guy. We always love having him on the show, so we're always more than happy to support him whenever we can. So make sure to check out that article when it goes on DLM. Um, but thanks for joining us for this hour and some odd uh, interview. It's always great having you on. For sure, for sure. And, of course, we'll be meeting back here in November when you, uh, when you win the KC Cup. <laughs> no promises. <laughs> See what I can do, but hey, uh, you never know. I think you can do it. I thought you had it this time, too, man. I thought you had it this time. All right, we're going to get out of here, guys. Like I said, thanks to Neg1 for coming in. Make sure to get in our Discord because that's where we host all our tournaments, and we'd love to have you in them. Hell, you might even play against Neg1 when he's trying out one of those new decks that come out in Zexel. So make sure to get in there. But it's time for us to go. I'm Circus. That's negative one. We'll see you next time.